What's up guys, this is Druid Mechanics and today I'm going to be showing you five ways to plan and finish your project. So this is geared towards uh, video game developers but these can actually be applied to really any type of project, especially things that are uh, a large scale, take a long time, involve a lot of different things and possibly even a team of developers. So these are just some things that have helped me learn and finish my projects and uh, hopefully they can be applied to your projects and help you out. So the first major thing when it comes to finishing projects is milestones. Set milestones and small goals and um, time limits and things for you to um, divide your main project into f uh, small subsections that you can finish easily and tackle one at a time. So an example is, um, say you've got uh, a game project that you want to finish and it's got all these different things involved. Um, for example, you got a main character, the character has to be um, put together with animations and art assets and um, you need to script or program the um, input for the player. For example, you, you may have um, keyboard and mouse input. Um, you may have uh, uh, Xbox or PlayStation controller input that you wish to map out to different um, animations and things like that. And so it helps when you have all of these different things to do to uh, categorize them into sections. For example, you have your character and you may wish to um, set the goal to um, within the first month or so uh, script out all of the programming or um, you know uh, blueprint scripting for the character's movement for the character um, to be able to run around jump sprint roll whatever it is you want your character to be able to do and um, and you know this isn't really considering like combat animations or opening doors closing doors that's all kind of um, uh, it, it gets to the point where your one little task is becoming the whole project so so keep them separated into small subsections like just player movement and then after you finish that maybe you, then you can move on to just combat and then after that just parkour or whatever it is you know your, your game involves um, it helps to, to stick to tiny little subsections that you can tackle in a short period of time and that also gives you a sense of accomplishment and progress um, whereas if you're trying to do the entire game all at once it's really messy and you, you know it gets out of hand so so um, so the first one is milestones um, for milestones it really helps to get things down in writing write notes put things out into a game plan um, if you're on a team uh, designate tasks for each team member and put them in writing so that you all are accountable to yourselves as much as to the group and if you're solo do the same thing make yourself accountable to yourself for each task and um, it's very important to not move on to the next task until you finish the current task because you may be halfway through getting your player movement um, programmed out and then um, you may see a YouTube video that says uh, you know how to implement sound in your game how to um, implement destructible objects in your game and, and you may be tempted to go on and start learning how to do that stuff or diving into that aspect of your game but your your player movement needs to be finished so don't um, skip ahead to uh, other sections until you've finished the current task so that's one way to keep your game continuously moving forward. So make a list. Um, if you haven't heard of this, there's a thing called a Gantt chart. So a Gantt chart is a way to um, map out a project and people use this in industry all the time, especially with um, large projects. And it's not just the game industry, it's engineering, it's businesses. It's mostly a business thing where you, you take each task for the entire project and you lay it out in a game plan on a timeline um, on a calendar basically and you can make these like in excel spreadsheets and things like that and you estimate how much time each piece of the project will take so if you if you give yourself a month 
to do character movement or maybe a week or two weeks you put that on the Gantt chart and you say okay at the end of two weeks this should be done and then this next task can be started and this next task will take maybe two months and at the end of that this next task can be started and you can do this for each team member on the same Gantt chart you can say okay during the first month um, this team member is going to be working on the, you know, the player movement while this other team member is going to be working on the AI or the um, movement of some NPC of some non-player character in the game like an enemy or something like that and so you've got these little chunks of time um, allotted for your project throughout its lifetime and that way you can get an estimate on how long the entire project is going to take and then by frequently updating it you can see whether or not you're on schedule. So Gantt charts are a useful tool to use. Um, look into that if you're interested. Um, another thing that I do is I use my phone and use note-taking apps on my phone quite frequently and that's because um, as I'm going about my day if I'm not you know if I have if you have a day job and you work on games at night um, during your day, day job when you go to the bathroom or something or you take a break or you're walking down the hall bust out your phone and go to your note app and just get get your like you know your mental thoughts jotted down real quick like okay so um, last night I made a lot of project on this today um, get this that and the other thing finished um, last night I um, made the character able to run and tonight I want to add a sprint functionality where I press you know the right shoulder button on the um, on the Xbox controller and he's in sprint mode or something like that get these little thoughts down even if you don't pull them out and look at them later you're still getting them manifested into some physical medium so that you've you know, kind of brought it into creation and you've solidified it in your brain that that's the next task you need to finish um, so so that's number one is milestones they're very important with projects set them and follow them and try not to fall out of um, your allotted task that you're um, you've set for yourself to complete Number two is um, make a notebook of the skills that you learn. So as you're doing a project, you're not going to know how to do everything in that project, especially if it's your first video game or something like that. And so along the way, you're going to need to learn certain skills that you can apply to your project. Now, something that I do is I have a big fat notebook full of uh, paper that's three hole punched. I use uh, green engineering paper because it's got graph, uh, a graph on there that you can use to put diagrams and things like that. So it really helps. Um, and what I do is every time I learn a new skill, especially with game development, this is important. I write notes about the things I learn about it because when I'm watching YouTube videos, when I'm reading documentation and jotting down these notes, I have a tabbed notebook that has little tabs with sections that I can uh, pull out later on when I need to do something such as oh I forgot how to get the actor location um, in, in an Unreal Engine game or um, set the actor rotation or or um, get the current character in the game or spawn an actor spawn a, an object into the world um, these are things that you know build up quite quickly and the more things you learn the more you're susceptible of uh, forgetting you're um, you're you're likely to not remember all those things and it's nice to not have to go and google um, all kinds of different things when you're trying to complete a task in your game it's easy if you got a nice notebook that's tabbed that you open up and you know exactly what's in it because you've written everything in there and you just and you know uh, it in a way that you understand it, it points out the things that you thought were tricky and took you a while to overcome those obstacles it, it spells it out for you so when you're taking your notes write things that you ran into that were roadblocks maybe it took you two hours to figure out how to do something write that thing down because later on when you need to do it and you bust out your notebook it's like oh yeah I struggled with that and this was the one little thing that I had to know in order to do it so a notebook is huge and I have a big tome it's like a big thick notebook of Unreal Engine um, 
things that I've learned how to do in C++ and blueprints and you know particle system you know the cascade editor and as well as other software like blender and things like that I've uh, written out notes for every main thing that I've learned and um, sometimes you don't even need to go back and look at those notes the fact that you wrote them down sort of burns it into your brain in a way it kind of solidifies it into your brain so you know that you know there's been studies that show that writing your notes down is actually uh, a better way to memorize the concepts than say typing them out or recording them and listening to them later there's something about the act of actually writing with a pencil or a pen that actually solidifies it into your brain and so I highly recommend this method so that's number two is uh, get a notebook and be consistent with every every time you learn a new skill put it in there number three is know your sources know the sources that you have at your disposal when it comes to learning new things or learning how to do something there are a few key sources that I use and as you uh, continue to develop yourself you're gonna um, find that there are a lot more out there so use those and hire uh, hierarchically organize them in order of most useful to like last resort so what I have is my sources are first and foremost the internet I google things whenever I don't know how to do something in Unreal Engine almost always there's someone else that had the same problem and asked it on the forums and so an easy way to find the answers to those is to Google UE4 space and then your question. How do I get the actor location of an actor? How do I change the material color dynamically for an object? How do I, you know, and whatever it is, if someone else has asked that question, it'll pop up on your Google search and usually it takes you to the Unreal Engine forums so if you don't have an Unreal Engine um, account and and you can't get in and ask questions on the forums um, definitely get that started because that's a, a huge huge resource a huge source of knowledge so the internet is the first and foremost uh, thing that I go to because oftentimes it takes me to my other sources um, so Google everything um, next is videos there are YouTube videos out there for anything in fact I heard that there was like a six or seven year old kid who drove to McDonald's because he learned how to drive a car with YouTube tutorial videos so this kid was watching a tutorial video on how to drive a car and he got in his parents car and drove to McDonald's so nowadays you can do anything because everybody who knows how to do something has made tutorial videos about it so go to YouTube and you know just browse set some time aside every day to browse YouTube to look for new skills to learn and make a list of things that you'd like to learn how to do it doesn't have to be game development it can be learning a foreign language it could be um, you know learning how to make websites learning how to build a car that you know uh, is solar powered or whatever it is you want to do um, you can likely find a YouTube for it and so um, you know that's that's one of the main sources for me when it comes to learning game development is watching YouTube tutorial videos so so videos is a huge source um, documentation documentation is um, it's 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 hard at first to use because especially if you're first learning say you don't know C++ right and you want to learn how to program in C++ and you may look at the the documentation for C++ and it's full of all this jargon and words and phrases and you have no idea what they mean and at first it's daunting but continually go back and look at the documentation for whatever it is you're learning if it's Unreal Engine check it out frequently um, you know once a week go and look at the documentation and read things and as you're getting better and better at your skill as you're honing your craft you're learning more jargon you're learning more terms and concepts that you didn't know before and as you go back and look at the documentation from time to time you're gonna read it every time and it's gonna make a little bit more sense than the last time um, as you get to the point where you're good enough to understand the documentation and just look at the documentation 
it becomes an essential tool, a very useful tool for you to use. So documentation can can um, really help you get into the nuts and bolts of the thing you're doing, whether it's a game engine, a programming language, or whatever. Um, so look at it early on, and if you don't understand it, that's fine. Uh, take note of the things you don't understand. Look at terms you didn't know what they meant, and, and, and you know, kind of make a mental note. If you see that term again and you learn what it is, you're gonna go, ah, maybe I can go back and look at that documentation again and understand it a little better this time. So documentation is a huge resource. Make friends. Friends can be a huge resource because they're a human being that you can talk to and you can get an answer back in real time. So if you've got a friend who's um, maybe around your skill level, maybe even better, and you know you talk to them frequently, you can ask them questions, they can ask you questions, and you can collaborate. Um, if you're on a team w with a project, this is um, obviously a valuable asset to you because you've got team members you can talk to, although uh, sometimes on teams people specialize, so they may not have the same expertise as you. So if you're the artist and you're the only artist on your team, make friends with other artists, perhaps on other teams or you know involved with their own solo projects or whatever, make friends with them. So, there are game developers um, and guilds and uh, things and they may be in your area depending on the city you live in. Um, if you live in a city where they don't have them, there are things online. So research this online. Look at game developers guilds, game developers conferences, go to conferences, meet people, make friends and expand your network of people because they will be able to and answer questions and introduce you to concepts that you may have never even heard of before. So friends is a huge one. And then um, another resource that I use is books. Now, and it, this depends on the subject matter. If you're learning to program, you know, there are lots of programming books out there. If you're learning to use a game engine, there are um, some game engine books out there. Now, um, my experience with Unreal Engine game uh, development books is that there are not a whole lot of really good books. There are some books that introduce you to beginner concepts. There are, um, there's like a, you know, learn Unreal Engine in 24 hours book, <laughs> which is, it's kind of funny because you can't learn Unreal Engine in 24 hours. Um, what it is is an intro to various topics in Unreal but it's a really good way to get your feet wet and as a beginner introduce you to some concepts then there are some more advanced books and um, if you're you know a programmer or an artist or whatever you can get some books that will help you to understand certain concepts um, sometimes books can be confusing they can have errors they're error prone um, and so I recommend first going to some of my above uh, uh, resources such as internet videos um, making friends those can help you as a beginner get more into um, what it is you're doing um, and then once you're pretty good at Unreal Engine then you can buy an Unreal Engine book um, say on programming or, or articles or whatever it is and because you're already familiar with the engine the concepts in the book will make much more sense and you'll be more likely to spot errors for example I was reading an Unreal Engine programming book and I had already gained some expertise in Unreal Engine programming, so I was already pretty good at it. And I was reading the book, and I was spotting errors here and there, and I'm like, yeah, that's not gonna compile. Yeah, no, that's gonna crash the engine or whatever. And and because I was already experienced, I was able to spot those. Um, and as a result, I benefited from reading that book because I learned about the concepts that they were trying to show me and teach me, and I was able to filter out the errors. Whereas if, if it was the first book I ever read on the subject, if I was a beginner, I would have typed the code out exactly as I saw it in the book, not knowing that it wouldn't compile. And, and you can see for this particular book, some of the people who left comments on Amazon about the book said, yeah, it's error ridden, don't get it you know it's uh, keep stay away from this book but you know the fact that I was able to spot the errors and get the gems of information out of that book um, allowed me to learn a lot and it was actually the most I'd ever learned from any book because it, it showed me all these concepts you know programs 
on Unreal and you know the, the organization and hierarchical nature of the object-oriented system and and I was like wow this book is so informative like if it didn't have all these errors in it it would be a great book so I still have that book and I keep it and look at it from time to time although I wouldn't recommend it to a beginner which is why I'm not going to tell you what, what the name is because of it. I've kind of, you know, sort of pointed out a lot of flaws in it, but just know that there are a lot of good books out there and know when it's appropriate for you to read a certain book because you might buy a book that looks really good and you'll open it up and be like, this doesn't make any sense. Put it to the side. Don't forget about it. Keep, you know, using YouTube videos, tutorials and things like that and then come back to it later and see if it makes more sense. So three was know your sources. Number four. Avoid expanding the scope of your project. This happens way too often and it can be a project killer uh, for sure. The thing is that you've got a list of things that you want, a list of features that you want in your game. And if it's your first game, it should be a small list because if you want to build an MMORPG, your first game, you're probably going to be at it for years and years and you, you're probably going to not finish it. Um, you know, there are exceptions to the rule, but still, it's, it's typically not a good idea. So, uh, with number one, when I told you to make milestones, get those lists, stick to the lists, and as you're working on them, try to avoid adding things to that list. As the scope expands, your list of things to do expands, and if you're not even keeping track of, you know, milestones and deadlines and, you know, dates that you want to finish by, um, that finish date is gonna just expand off into the horizon and disappear and you're never gonna finish so stick to the plan if you finish more can be added so you could keep a list of like icing on the cake type items like oh wouldn't it be really cool if this happened in our game and um, you know we've already got a list of things to do but if we finish when once we finish all of those things on our list we could try to add that in as a feature and, and see if that would be possible to finish, you know, if we finish on time or before our, you know, deadline, we could probably sneak those features in. But don't start working on them now. Don't just automatically, you know, halfway through your game design decide, oh, this is going to be a multiplayer game. That would be cool. I want it to be, you know, playable with two players across the internet. And then go and start learning multiplayer programming and start turning it into a multiplayer game halfway through no that's uh, that's changing the plan and it's changing everything and it's it's not a good way to stick to your guns and stay on track so avoid expanding the scope of your game that's number four uh, number five and this is an important one reward yourself when you finish a milestone you can you, can, you know give yourself a break now um, I know a lot of people who um, can go for hours and hours on end. I'm one of those people. I tend to wake up early, get started on my project, and I work on it for hours. And I try to work on it all day if I can. And and sometimes you can get burnt out that way. If you work eight hours straight, you know, without even taking a break to eat or something like that, you're going to be pretty worn out by the end of the day. You're going to step outside into the sunshine and you're going to be like, Jesus, it's so bright out here. Like I can't, I can't, you know, believe that I was inside for eight hours straight, cooped up in front of my computer. If you work for a good solid four hours straight and you make some huge progress on like an inventory system or you know your game HUD or something like that, you know, give yourself a break and reward yourself. Get you know, um, binge on a you know a, a, one of your favorite episodes of uh, you know a few episodes of your favorite uh, Netflix series or. Um, you know, look at YouTube for a few uh, few videos and try not to get sucked into the dark side of YouTube. But you know, go and uh, go out and get some ice cream. You know, get get a nice meal. Don't skip meals because you're working so hard. You know, like I've done that so often. Like I've worked all day, 16 hours straight, and I I, I stop and realize like I am starving. Like I am parched. Like I haven't even drank water. You know, for this whole time. Give yourself breaks, 
that's one. But then as you achieve important accomplishments, give yourself a little bit of re reward and make sure the reward is proportional to the thing that you did. If you have, you know, a big month long goal of getting this this character able to run around in a screen in response board and mouse input and you finish it and it looks good and it's nice reward yourself and your team if your team creates you know finishes a good milestone go out and have dinner and and celebrate because um, a game is a long really long time-consuming project and if you don't give yourself little breaks and rewards throughout it's gonna seem even longer but if you're giving yourself breaks and rewards it kind of motivates you to get into that next step that next milestone and get going and you look forward to the next reward and it feels good so reward yourself and finally um, I'm gonna give you um, one extra thing so I said I would give you five but I'm gonna actually give you a sixth thing that can help you um, and this is kind of like a bonus and um, so uh, weekly meetings now this this is something that uh, not all teams do on a weekly basis they maybe do it monthly or maybe they do it you know bi-weekly but meet once every so often and make sure it's it's scheduled and it's periodic like once a week once on everyone's day off or something like that get together and um, update each other on the progress you've made right if you're if your tasks are in writing and you're accountable for them look at that and look at what you said you would complete for that week and see if you did and if you did okay great you met that milestone maybe it's a, a cause for celebration but if you didn't try to reevaluate reassess what your next week goals should be so um, even if you're not on a team even if you're doing this whole thing solo you know set some time as like a self meeting once a week and look at what you've accomplished look at the things you said you were gonna do and that you may have forgotten and this is why it's important to write everything down um, look at those things that you uh, were accountable for did you accomplish them if not you know it's not a big deal just reschedule and uh, reassess and the more times you do this the more you're gonna gate be age how long it takes you to do a particular task so weekly meetings or monthly meetings are, are crucial especially for teams but definitely if you're doing it solo so yeah meet with your team brainstorm look at overall progress update your goals and milestones brainstorm on ideas and changes so some of you might be um, working on a particular thing and you say look I have this really good idea that it would improve our game if we just made this change okay you know present that idea and if you guys decide to change it great now when you make changes be very careful not to make the mistake of expanding the scope of your project so that was number four um, don't expand the scope of your project don't make it a longer project when you've already set milestones and goals you can add it to the list of top uh, icing on the cake items but um, if it's a, if it's a small change that won't you know alter how long it's going to take you to finish the game then by all means go ahead and you know make changes and make improvements now that being said there are exceptions sometimes teams do need to make changes that will put the schedule behind farther and you know make a judgment call in that case make make a call and, and um, you know decide if that's something that your team wants to do and it and uh, Oftentimes it can involve changing the entire game. And hopefully it's not halfway through the project. Hopefully that's very early on. But um, I would advise advise against changing the scope of your project or changing the entire project and things like that. So, um, so that's like a, an extra thing is the weekly meetings. Some people don't like to do it, but I highly um, encourage regular meetings with your group or with yourself just to keep yourself accountable, just to keep you on track and if you you know lose motivation and you don't do much work for a week you know a, a weekly meeting is gonna get your ass right back into gear it's gonna be like oh you didn't do much this week you you binged on YouTube or whatever um, but you said you were gonna do these tasks and you didn't so you know really make sure that you get on it next week and, and uh, light a fire under yourself and, and get those things done so a weekly meeting is important so so those were the five things plus one um, that helped me finish projects and hopefully they can help you finish them so just to recap is uh, one was milestones um, give yourself milestones and and uh, goals to set uh, to to accomplish um, 
Number two, keep a notebook of the skills you learn. Um, you will not regret having a notebook or a tome of secrets that you can pull out and it'll show you how to do something that you've forgotten how to do. Three was know your sources, right? You've got the internet, you got videos, you've got uh, documentation, you got friends, so make friends. And of course, there's books. And then uh, four was try not to expand the scope of your project. Keep it, you know, a tight schedule. Um, you know, schedule slip, that's okay, but don't make it something, don't make your schedule slip because of something you've added to the game that wasn't there in your original plan. So um, that's number four. Five is reward yourself, give yourself breaks, make sure you don't burn out, and make sure you're uh, awarded for your accomplishments because, you know, that's an important thing when it comes to preventing burnout and keeping your motivation high. And then the uh, bonus six was weekly meetings, um, schedule meetings with yourself. You know, it doesn't have to be weekly, but on a regular basis, schedule meetings, meet with your team, you know, make sure everyone is on the same page and no one's going off and going rogue and working on something that nobody expected they, them to work on. So, so that's the five plus one things that you can use to finish your first project or any project and um, and they should you know be able to keep you um, in gear keep you motivated keep you making progress and assure that you actually finish what you started which is really important because so many people don't finish things they start and it just kind of disempowers them and keeps them from achieving their goals in life so you know give yourself goals and finish them so I hope you like this video um, if you did, um, go ahead and click the like button. Um, if you're interested in more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, and uh, please leave a comment below. And I'm asking you, the viewer, to leave a comment below about some of the things that you use to keep yourself in gear. What do you um, do that helps you finish projects? What do you do that helps you stay motivated? How do you stop from you know burning out? How do you keep from... Uh, burning yourself out and just throwing throwing in the towel and giving up so put that in a comment below and um, and I'm interested in seeing what some of you guys do in order to um, keep yourself on track so thanks again I hope you like this video we'll see you next time